So I've made plenty of content over the past couple months on Ceph, on Proxmox, all that good stuff. And it's finally time for me to eat the dog food, so to speak. I've been using Proxmox myself for quite a long time, but I haven't been deploying Ceph. I've been using TrueNAS for storage instead. And it's time to change that. I had a hard drive failure recently. I didn't lose any data because I have backups, but uh, it made me think it's time to move to a more reliable storage system. ZFS is great and all, but when you have a single node, that node becomes a single point of failure. You can't take the node offline to do maintenance. You can't add and remove hard drives that affecting everyone else who's using that system. So it's time for me to go to Ceph. And that means I need some more hardware. And what I would like to do is buy some used Ryzen hardware on eBay, like a first gen, second gen, 1600, 1800, something like that, and uh, put it to work in my new Proxmox cluster with Ceph. And one of the challenges with those systems is that early Ryzen hardware, actually all of the AM4 Ryzen systems that aren't APUs, don't have integrated graphics. So on a lot of Intel systems, you put the integrated graphics, you use the integrated graphics, you boot it up, you install Proxmox, whatever, you're, you're happy. But with no integrated graphics, I basically have to put a graphics card in, install Proxmox, or clone Proxmox from another system, that works too. And then I just have to hope it can boot up and post with no graphics card. And I'm not entirely sure if that's going to happen. So I have a Ryzen system on a test today. We're going to see if we can add a RJ45 Cisco style console cable to the COM port. So we can have a serial terminal in Proxmox. Come along with me on this adventure. So here are the goodies I bought online. To try to hook up a serial terminal to a modern ATX system. So this is a USB to RJ45 console cable. You'll find them called like Cisco compatible or Juniper compatible or whatever. They all use the same pinout. You can get USB-A or USB-C. I bought USB-A, probably should get USB-C for my laptop, whatever. So this is gonna be my USB to serial converter for the host. This is a RJ45 extension cable, female to male and a panel mount. So this is what I'm planning on using. I'm planning on building a uh, computer case. And so this would just pop into a panel in the front or the back. And then I'm gonna cut this end off, find the wires here. That's the hope. And these. These should be 10 pin insulation displacement connectors or IDC connectors. Um, these are usually used with ribbon cable, but I'm gonna try to crimp down directly on the Cat5 in this uh, RJ45 extender. So this should go to the 10 pin header on a motherboard that's like the COM1. That's, uh, that's the hope. Let's build up a cable. Let's cut the end of this right off. Okay, so the center pins should be the blue and white pair. Those are both ground. The brown and orange pairs are both gonna be control signals and my green pair is gonna be TX and RX. So I don't care about the CTS, RTS, DTR, etc. Um, that just leaves me ground, so I gotta pick one. So here is my connector here. It should be how you go. There we go. Here is our victim. My brother went on spring break. He'll never know. Since I don't want to mess with the system too much, I'm going to put in a new SSD for Proxmox. I'll take it back out and I'm done. This has a GPU in it. It's a Radeon RX 580. CPU is a Ryzen 1600. So yeah, let's test it. Plugging this into the COM header. Okay. So now I get my uh, console cable here. Ooh. It is another day. I had to come back to this. Let's see what we get. Oh yeah, look at all that console message stuff. So can I log in with the serial terminal? I remember I still have a graphics card. Oh yes. So if I had a real big problem, like for example, I'm rearranging PCI cards and my ethernet stops working, 
serial console will be enough for me to get back up and going. If I have a real big problem and I gotta rerun the installer or something, maybe I put a graphics card back in, but this kind of support is what I'm hoping for. Now what I wanna see is does this still work with the graphics card removed? So remember, this Radeon card is the only graphics device in the system. I'm using a Ryzen 1600, which does not have integrated graphics like Intel cards do. So my hope is that if this system works, I can buy a bunch of used Ryzen first gen or second gen systems like 1000, 2000, or 3000 series and uh, save some money on that. So let's see what we get in the serial console when we boot it up. Power. Well, the RAM is colorful, that's nice. Not gonna be able to afford colorful RAM for my next build though. Mostly because it doesn't fit in a 1U form factor. And I'm going for a 1U for my new systems. My new servers at least. Oh, oh, yep, there we go. D message is very busy. And we're at the login screen. So it looks like changing the uh, PCIe devices did not change my network order in this case. I know on some systems it does and it is maddening. So that's why I wanted the serial terminal so that when I make the system headless, I don't suddenly lose access to it. And I can do some basic maintenance if I need to. So with this good test here, this is another thing on my journey to a, uh, a new storage system. I'm probably going to be doing some live streams coming up to uh, design like a 1U chassis because I'm not really happy with anything I found on the internet. But uh, yeah, that's my goal going forward to build some first gen or second gen Ryzen systems. So Zen, Zen Plus, Zen 2. And uh, put some Ceph on there for my new storage network. So if that's your kind of thing, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I do like that. If you want to chat with me on Discord, I like that too. And uh, as always, I'll see you on the next adventure.